Getty Sir Vince Cable claimed the young voted against Brexit because they fear the future outside the youth older better than the young and voting. They are well represented in our institutions, parliament, the law and business. Not surprisingly because they have spent a lifetime getting there. They have done that, got the t-shirt, and they know a thing or two. It is idiotic of Cable to imply that the young voted against Brexit because they fear the future outside the EU, since when did young people worry about long-term anything? They are interested in the here and now and maybe the weekend. I don't recall bothering about the future when I was a lad. I never thought about pensions, saving up to buy a house, let alone the exchange rate mechanism or politics, at least not until I was well into my 30s. Perhaps I was a late developer but I think my experience was typical. Cable is 74, he accuses people his age of comprehensively shafting the young. If he has such a low opinion of his own kind he should resign immediately and make way for a 20-something. After all by his standards a man of 74 can't be trusted to make sound decisions. Or is he the exception to his own rule? My fears for Brexit grow week by week. The suggestion that Britain should offer a £36 billion settlement appears to have come from officials while senior ministers were on holiday. EU negotiators will naturally take it to be only an opening gambit and go for more. Meanwhile it is revealed that at least six of our trade envoys, who are supposed to promote Britain around the world, openly oppose Brexit. Why haven't they been sacked? We need people to talk us up, not down. A bunch of Tory remoners is also threatening to side with Labour and trying to keep us in the single market and customs union, it seems our rulers are shafting each other. Then they will comprehensively shaft the rest of us, old and young alike. One day last week there were reports of a 104F killer heatwave, a 40% increase in the number of biting midges in Scotland and gigantic queues at passport control. Surely things could not get worse. Oh yes they could. While walking in London's Richmond Park the first tripped over an anthill and fell flat on my face, bruising my ribcage and gashing my nose. I'm fed up explaining what happened so now I just say if you think I look bad you should see the ants, remember David Cameron promising that there would be a bonfire of the quangos. Not only was it a damp squib, the government is planning to create 20 new quangos to carry out work done by the EU, the new bodies will add to the £195 billion, we taxpayers already pay for quangos which employ 266,137 people, many of them political cronies with more than 60 on £150,000 a year or more. And you thought we could look forward to red tape and costs being slashed. Dream on. Getty Dame Helen Mirren claimed moisturizers are a waste of time and money for what it's worth. I agree with Dame Helen Mirren's opinion that moisturizers are a waste of time and money with the possible exception of skin that spends a lot of time in water. Another commodity that we could do without is liquid hand soap. Old-fashioned solid soap cakes are perfectly adequate, much cheaper and last so much longer. Nor do we need everything to be packed in plastic containers that end up littering the oceans. I am also with the Prince of Wales in regretting the decline in traditional crafts such as handmade pianos, fans, cricket balls and bats, parchment and gold leaf. Of course machine made things work efficiently but how wonderful to use a SAR spade wrought by hand in a workshop. I recently met a former QC who now carves Windsor chairs. He told me he gets a great deal more satisfaction from his new trade than the law. Years ago, I visited an exhibition of vintage Bugatti cars. The beautiful engine blocks, axles and bodywork had been beaten by hand. It was apparent that whoever had made them put their hearts and souls into these works of art. I would be very happy for taxpayers' money to fund apprenticeships in such crafts. There should always be room for fine workmanship. Getty Prince Charles claimed he regretted the decline in traditional crafts such as handmade pianos. The National Trust has abandoned its insistence that workers at a stately home must wear gay pride lanyards and badges but not before infuriating thousands of members and damaging its fundraising prospects. I am sure the volunteers did not object to the badges because they are against gays, who have won their right to enjoy respect and equality among the wider community. It was the idea of compulsion that made them rebel. We British don't like being ordered around, especially in matters that clearly should be up to the individual. It's also wrong for public bodies to get involved in politics, sexual politics is especially contentious. Organizations like the National Trust and the RSPCA do themselves no favors by straying beyond the purpose for which they were created. Getty Seaside Resorts are scrapping deck chairs in favor of more comfortable loungers' own object I would not lament is the traditional deck chair. Seaside resorts are scrapping them in favor of more comfortable loungers. The canvas chairs look pretty but they give you horrible backache and the wood frame makes a groove in the back of your head. The traditional ISNT always best.